Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel, and today we are checking out two more episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine with episode 17 of season 5, A Simple Investigation, and then episode 18 of season 5, Business as Usual. Star Trek Deep Space Nine has been amazing the past four episodes with For the Uniform, an amazing editing episode, then In Purgatory's Shadow and By Inferno's Light was an incredible two-parter followed by a major Bashir reveal that he is actually genetically enhanced. He's a genetic, genetically enhanced person in Dr. Bashir, I presume. So we've had an amazing four episode run of this show so far and I'm hoping that these two episodes continue the awesomeness <laughs> that the last two ep the last four episodes had. And remember, if you want to check out more of my Star Trek Deep Space Nine reactions, you can check my Patreon of uncut and early access reactions to my movies and TV shows that come up to three weeks early, which means not only can you check out episodes 19 and 20 on Patreon right now, you can also check out episodes 21, 22, 23, and 24, all the way up to the, all the way up to the episode Empok Nor. Kind of a fun title. So if you want to check those episodes out, you can head over to my Patreon right now. If not, stay tuned for next week where you'll get the next two episodes on YouTube. Anyways, time now to dive into episode 17. So I hope you enjoy my reaction to A Simple Investigation. What's this guy hiding? Can I help you? I think so. What are you- Who are these people? Oh my god. The Karate Chop of Destiny. Didn't we know what you were going to give to her? So for the last time, where what? is it? What is this? You see? It was him all along. Oh! Oh, he just got absolutely evaporated. She might know where he hid it. What woman? What's the thing that he hid? Is that the new Hollow Suite program? Queen's Gambit. The Queen's Gambit? Good morning. Finally. I haven't seen that show, but I've heard it's good. Brainwashed to assassinate the Queen of England. Ooh, somebody stop me. What? <laughs> Agent <laughs> who comes out of retirement to help me foil this diabolical plot. Okay, Odo's like, I like that. Falcon? Again? I'm tired of being the bad guy. <laughs> but yeah, you're a good bad guy. Odo? Uh, what, what, what do is you it, want Odo? me to do again? This feels like an Odo episode. There's something he's thinking about. And steal her away from Falcon. He steals my girl? <laughs> Better get another Nigel Dunlap. Are you kidding? Look at her! No, Brian's like, yeah, look. I'm busy on Saturday. What are you we'll doing? We'll do it when you're not- Oh, does he have a date, maybe? Never should have agreed to be part of this in the first place. Sorry. What's on his mind? Find someone else to play Odo's part. <laughs> He's like, I'll do you it. Know what? <laughs> oh, Brian, man. I don't want a hollow sweet. And I don't want anything to eat. I wonder if this is the woman. Maybe you should spend less time bothering your customers and more time keeping an eye on your business. <laughs> Just licks his finger. He's got a graviton emitter hidden in his ring. He's manipulating the table for his friend over there. Oh, wow. <laughs> Korg is zoomed off. Are you waiting for someone? Yeah, he's you. dead. Oh, what? Isn't that what you were hoping I'd say? Oh, it's just that you I was very confused. Bedroom eyes? You probably get that all the time. Not really. This woman is reading Odo so wrong. I'm security chief Odo. My office is just across the promenade. I'll be all right. Well. This is Dutch angle for Odo. Interesting choice. In my office. Yes. Across the promenade. Exactly. <laughs> Good try, Odo. I think Odo, something's going on with Odo. He's never met her before. He seems very f frazzled at the moment. Is he in love with someone? Is he going on a date with someone? Did he fall in love with this woman just now? Who knows? I'm excited to find out though. Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Yeah, I'm interested to see what this woman has as well. These two men murdered someone over it. So what does this woman have? Where has she hid what or he, that guy hid the thing? I don't know. I'm kind of interested in what's happening with Odo. What is it? Checking the contents of one of those crates, a tentacle grabbed my hand. <laughs> Regular shipments of it since the day they were posted here. Ah, I forgot Klingons. Are mm. oh, you living here now? Actually, I'm... Never mind. No, he's looking at his face. A woman in Quarks told me I have bedroom eyes. What I'm trying to see if it's true. What does that even mean? Like sexy eyes? Meaning what? Meaning 
You should see her again. Yes, go. That's what I'm saying, Kira. Logan. She's already here. I wanted to check the passenger manifest to find out if he came aboard. Why, you Why didn't you come over? to me? I could have checked the manifests for you. Exactly. Data port bothering you? What? The security protocols protecting your computer generated some nasty feedback. What? She has a data port in her face? They're not illegal. They ought to be. People tend to use them to access information. Odo hates data ports. What were you meeting him about? A personal matter. Well, I suppose I could just go to his quarters and ask him. She's so secretive. It's a delicate situation. What is happening? What is the situation? Illegal goods, weapons, what is this? He's helping me locate my daughter. Oh, interesting. I gave her up when she was born 15 years ago. Oh, do you think this is a cover? We're gonna find the stupid stain on the carpet. Oda, look at the carpet. Yes, the couch has been moved. What's left of him? That's so cool. I didn't know that when you like phased someone and they died, they turned into like this dust. Considering what he did for a living, he probably had dealings with all sorts of marginal characters. Maybe it was a robbery. And what makes you say that? What do they rob? Well, whatever happened, I doubt it had anything to do with me or my daughter. I don't believe her daughter's story right now, because they're looking for an item, those evil people. Oh, I can't believe this. I was so close to finding her, and now I'm going to have to start all over again. That's if you'll let me. Oh my god. <laughs> Considering you weren't able to access any secured information, I've decided to drop those charges. Very nice of you, Odo. You're a very kind man. I hope you find your daughter. They have this sexual tension between them, but I feel like she's not saying enough. You know what I mean? Like she's still being a little cryptic. I don't believe her daughter story. And if it's true, I will apologize to her, but I don't believe it at face value. Mark! <laughs> We're closed! Oh, Mord. Oh, look at him. Oh, more Mord. I'm afraid the assay office is closed for the evening. Dude, Odo obviously following her. Still got caught. I've been following you. I didn't know. I'm good too. Does she know that he's a shapeshifter? He's probably like the, the wall. Actually, I'd have you strip searched. That might be fun. Oh my god. Given that all it contains is information about a missing girl, Tovid went to great lengths to secure it. Yeah, too great of a length, it seems. I'm trying not to read too much into that. You don't have a daughter, do you? That's what I'm saying. No. I didn't believe her, guys. Am I a detective? I've heard you make. Not quite. I meant what I said about your eyes. Bedroom eyes, what does that mean? Why? Because if I don't, I'm dead. Maybe you'd better start at the beginning. Yeah, please tell me everything. Uh, I see you've heard of him. He's with the Orion Syndicate. Oh, we heard of them again. Taken, he specializes in blackmail and extortion. How do you fit in with his organization? The Orion Syndicate. I wonder if they're going to start getting bigger and bigger in this show. But there's not much I can do about it. You don't quit the Orion Syndicate unless they say you can. Mm, unless you die, pretty much. He told me he had information. Information I could use to break away from Drame free and clear. Interesting. Do you believe that he was telling the truth? So those two guys maybe worked for the Orion Syndicate too. But for some reason, I decided to trust him. Maybe it was a setup. So you think Drame had Tovid killed to stop you from getting this crystal? And whoever he hired is probably still on the station. I mean, they are on the station still. They'll just send me to prison. I'm not turning this over to the Fineans. Okay, Odo. Let's keep it an internal matter. Was probably careful not to send anyone you'd recognize, but you never know. Imagine if she's Drame. That would be crazy. You mean you're just doing this out of the kindness of your heart? I don't have a heart. <laughs> yeah, Oda, that's true, I guess. They have the crystal. We've got to make sure she doesn't access it. What's on the crystal? I was hoping we wouldn't have to kill her. He'll get over it. Okay. This is Odo's room. I use these things to practice shape-shifting. She didn't know. These are your quarters? 
Oh, maybe she didn't know. Deputies stationed outside in the corridor, posing as a maintenance crew doing repairs. Oh, that is so awesome. I regenerate by reverting to a gelatinous state. Sounds relaxing. It is. It is, actually. Yeah, she kind of gets Odo a little bit. I understand you haven't been able to identify anyone from the security recordings. No. I are you lying? What about the crystal? Dax and Chief O'Brien are still trying to get past the encryption lockouts. Oh, they'll get past it eventually. To access it, the feedback shorted out the computer. I'd hate to see what that would do to your data port. Oh, it could kill her. I think. I assume. It's not like a Federation world where everything is handed to you. You know how I ended up with this? How? I was a net girl. A net girl? Myself, I wasn't selling my body since there was no actual- Oh, Like an internet prostitute, probably. But after a while, I couldn't pretend anymore. I wanted out. I guess I'm finally going to get my wish. Mm. Out of life. Only problem is, I'll be dead. That's what I just said. The dead don't cry. Arissa. The dead don't cry. I'm not going to let anyone harm you. You have to trust me. You have to trust Odo. He's the best. He actually is the best. The rest of his life, you could get immunity for any past crimes you may have committed. Start a new really? life. That's so dangerous, though. I've done things in my life I'm not proud of, too. Yeah, we did actually watch an episode recently about that. I worked for the Cardassians. Killed three innocent men. Most people can't see past the surface. Especially when what they see is so beautiful. Oh, flattering, Odo. Make yourself comfortable. I'll check in on you later. I'm not going anywhere. Good. I love that Odo just has a giant amethyst crystal in his room. For what? Who knows? But it's kind of cool. Let me help you with that. Oh my god. Oh my god. Of course Bashir is this guy. Out of place. <laughs> okay, Bashir. Interrupt. I need to talk to you. Alone. <laughs> <laughs> Driver, stop the car. Stop the car. Steal away from Falcon. Well, uh, yes, but um, since you didn't show up, you <laughs> of course. Well, it's that kind of program. What is this all about, Odo? You didn't come here to talk to me about women. <laughs> yeah, he did actually. This is about bedroom eyes, isn't it? Who told you about her? I feel like <laughs> Dax actually is Miles. Oh. <laughs> If you're interested in this woman, you have to let her know. I can't. Why not? Yeah, just say something cheesy. <laughs> what if she rejects you? She might. So what? But she she can't go through rejection. life trying to avoid getting a broken heart. Just look at Dax. And living with that is worse than having a broken heart. Dude, Believe me. Why is Bashir just like a saint right now? We're nearly finished, darling. Oh my god. Car trouble, Mr. Bashir. Hi, Aldo. <laughs> Hi, Odo. I you were talking. Didn't anyone ever tell you you shouldn't stop for hitchhikers? <laughs> oh, Brian, so funny. I didn't expect to find you awake. I couldn't sleep. Yeah, she's been standing at that window for so long. I'm not in your way, am I? No. He actually wants you more in the way. He wants you more in the way. I usually read for an hour or two. What are you reading? Love story. Oh, have you figured out who did it yet? By the third page. <laughs> By the third page. Dude. I don't really feel like reading. Dude, the uh, sexual tension right now is insane. Fuck for a while. What do you want to talk about? Let's talk with our lips on top of each other's lips. Okay. This is like Odo's first relationship thing, isn't it? I know he had a crush on Kira, but this is his first kiss, I feel. A stern suspicion is very important in my line of work. <sighs> oh, he just made a little growling sound. You're the first woman I've ever been close with. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think that's right. I've never been able to let down my guard. I hope she doesn't betray him. Have you never been with anyone else before? No, this is his first. On my home world, I had an experience you might consider. Oh, yeah. With the lady chick. Sexual. Thing. I remember that. It was like season three or something. Guys, think about it. Odo's 
you know, the hot dog. Odo's a dog. He could grow that thing however big he wants it to be. <laughs> the ultimate machine. <laughs> but I know what the Orion Syndicate does to people who turn against them. Yeah, we saw that actually with Odo and Quark as well. Spend the rest of my life looking over my shoulder. We'll stay with Odo then. I feel like it would help Odo if he decreased his nose a very little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, we shouldn't let that stop us. Oh, Odo. Odo, what are you saying? Wait, what would that feel like, guys? You know, what would that feel like? She spent inside the changeling. Weird, huh? You asked to be told when the sensor array became available. Thank you, Odo and a woman. <laughs> the gossip. You can begin your experiment at any time. I'm talking to Kira. <laughs> Morph does not like this gossip. Don't shout across the room if you want to gossip with us. <laughs> Where is Odo? <laughs> Morph just wanted to be a part of the gossip. I guess he's running late. He's never late. He's well, never spent the night with a woman before. Yeah, it's a first. That's nice. <laughs> isn't it? It is nice. Cisco isn't bad. Did you see the look on Otto's face? I am telling you something happened. Uh, she knows. She has lifetimes of experience. Of course she would know. But I hope she doesn't. If this woman betrays Odo's trust, I might have to give her a little whoosh. The woman asked to make a deal. She gives us the crystal. What? Drain lets her go. After everything Odo did for you. Don't be stupid. As soon as we got the crystal, she dies. Oh, come on. Gino, it obviously doesn't agree with him. I'll be in Science Lab 4. Oh my god, it's you. Your security chief, Odo. Well, it's another one of your people then. She's not who she seems to be. What? She's an intelligence agent with my government. What? That's not possible, she would have told me. No. She doesn't know. Oh my god, she's like a sleeper agent. All her previous memories were removed and stored in the data crystal. Oh my days. I'll explain the rest. She's one of those sleeper agents. We've seen Cardassians do this before. I don't know where she went. It generates a distinctive signal. We might be able to track it. Well, I like this guy. Is this guy not the same actor as the guy at the start of the episode? I swear it is. It's a setup. It's a setup. Do you have it? Oh, is she gonna die? I was wondering what he was doing for a second. No weapons. He's showing her no weapons. Very smart. Is that a secret pocket? She has like a secret pocket in her dress. That is so cool. It changed the game. You really hurt his feelings when you left. He liked you. Oh my god. Your eyes. Oh my god. Who is this? Oh, wait. Oda's about to make some sock trap. Oh my god. Oda didn't go for the guy with the gun first? Oh. Good punch. I just wish I knew what this is all about. It's you, buddy. It's you. How long was she undercover? She volunteered for the operation two years ago. Two years undercover. Once she knows about Drame, we're going to be able to cripple his entire organization. That's good. That's good. You make it sound as if it all went according to plan. She was nearly killed. She knew the risks when she volunteered. We yeah, I assume she would have. Including what just happened in the cargo bay. Why did- You can't plan for everything. If Drame's people had monitored the transmission, it would have compromised the entire operation. We couldn't risk it. What matters is that she's safe. Yeah, she's safe now. The transfer's complete. I'm gonna take her to surgery. Wow, the one woman that Odo falls in love with and actually gets with, and she turns out to be a flippin' secret agent. Arissa. She looks kinda cool though, I can't lie. She looks like a cool Jedi. There's something you need to know. I'm married. Married? Of course. Just screw in the dagger. Just screw in the dagger at this point. Might as well just destroy Odo. Might as well just blow him up. Sorry. Don't be. You didn't know. Poor guy. I fell in love with a woman who never really existed. 
Oh. In that moment, she did. She was real. And she loved you. In a way. She still does. Oh. I got chills there. Oh, man. Will I ever see you again? No. I highly doubt it. I don't know. I'll never forget you, Odo. Never. Oh, now he's all alone again. His first true heartbreak, I would say. His first true heartbreak. It's like he broke up in a relationship, you know what I mean? Oh, DS9, man. They know how to do endings, that's for sure. They know how to do episode endings. That was a great ending. A horrible ending, but a great ending. And that was my reaction to episode 17 of season 5, A Simple Investigation. And that episode was... A very good episode again with a really sad ending a really good ending but a really sad ending it was an Odo episode I thought that this was maybe gonna be an Odo episode just because the title a simple investigation it's just like obviously it's probably gonna be an Odo episode because he's the only one that kind of investigates if that makes any sense but yeah it was an episode about Odo kind of falling in love because we've seen Odo fall in love fall in love before with Kira we've seen him Kind of have these feelings of love but this was the first time where these feelings have actually turned into something this was his first time you know kissing a woman and i'm assuming they slept together and stuff as well as we kind of as was implied in that one very romantic scene in the bed i gotta say star trek use has died very romantic and then you know what all this stuff happens you know he's fallen in love with this woman they finally he's finally done stuff with her and stuff and and then it turns out that she's a flippin spy that she's like some undercover secret spy that she doesn't even know she's a spy she's like jason bourne you know what i mean she's like whatever the cardassians used to do with their sleeper agents she's like a sleeper agent and yeah it turns out also she's married why did the writers have to add that in that she's also married like they already hurt odo enough why did she have to come in and go yeah i'm also married <laughs> you know what i mean it's just she's just stabbing his heart over and over and over and over and over again <laughs> like what i'm gonna be much worse than this you know what i mean but it was a really nice episode to see odo just you know go through the motions of a relationship because you know he is a changeling again he used to be a solid but now he's a changeling again but since he has been a solid he kind of understands what it's like to be a solid and he's maybe even gotten a liking to some of solid our our activities you know what i mean including relationships and stuff like that so it's been really cool to see odo kind of develop this passion for doing things that most changelings probably wouldn't do and relationships is one of them and so it was really cool to see odo go through the steps of a relationship you know kind of have a crush on this woman and then ask Bashir about how to ask her out and obviously Bashir is the best person to ask because he's so smooth and stuff like that even though he gets rejected like 90% of the time he, he still he still asks people out <laughs> you know what I mean so I guess you can go to Bashir for the confidence angle and stuff like that the charm angle if you will so Odo goes to Bashir I love that scene so much where they're in the hollow suite and he just sits in the car Bashir is like about to make out with that that woman whatever that he saved in the hollow suite program and then Odo jumps in the car and then O'Brien shows up and he's like, don't you know you shouldn't have, you shouldn't pick up hitchhikers or <laughs> I just loved it so much. I wish I could just see, you know that Dr. Basir episode where he's like James Bond? I just want another one of those types of episodes, like a fun Hollow Sweet episode where characters, our characters are just playing like their flipping Hollow Sweet versions of themselves. I just find that to be so fun. So it was great to see that little moment. But then, you know, then we got a lot of romantic tension and sexual tension, especially when Odo comes back from the Hollow Suite and he's standing there and he's talking to the woman and they slowly move closer and closer and closer together. And oh my God, the way that they talk so slowly and the way that they're moving. Oh, you just kiss already. And then they did kiss. And it was super awesome, but I was very wary of what was going to happen because whenever stuff like this happens in ds9 it always ends badly in some way it always ends badly like there's never been a time like this where it's ended and the couples stay together unless it's like main characters like Worf and dax for example so i was expecting something bad to happen like maybe she would die or maybe she was actually drom i think that was his name the big bad orion syndicate guy that was kind of overshadowing everything in this episode but it turned out she was a sleeper agent which was not on the cards, not on my bingo cards, and it was really sad. But I think that now Odo has 
felt what it is like to be in a relationship, I think he is going to be more open to doing stuff like this in the future. And that makes me pretty excited because I, I'm hoping that we explore this more with Odo, this relationship, this these feelings of love and stuff that he never had before. I'm hoping that we explore it now more with Odo. I think there's a lot of opportunities with him now that he is a changeling again, but he used to be a solid. I think there's a lot of cool things that he can do, a lot of cool like things that he can explore that he never would have as a changeling beforehand. But now that he's a solid, he's experienced some of this stuff or he was a solid, he has experienced some of this stuff. And it'll be interesting to see him talk to changelings in the future with the experience of a solid in his background. I think that'll be interesting as well. But anyways, let's get into the next episode now. I'm assuming this is going to be a Ferengi episode because it's titled Business as Usual. And that just, if this is not a Ferengi episode, then this is the strangest title of all time for an episode. So I'm expecting a Ferengi episode. I love Ferengi's episodes. I think they're really fun a lot of the time. So I'm expecting another fun episode. Anyways, I hope you enjoy my reaction to episode 18 of season five of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Business as Usual. I risk eight strips with a purchase at six and a sale of ten. Oh, interesting. Quark. Get your move. Um, Quark is distracted. I can't believe it. What is you it? beg me to play Tonga with you, and then you don't pay attention to the game. Bro, I hate when people want to play board games and then they don't actually play. The Sethi and Commodities Exchange is in chaos. Everybody's selling. Prices falling. Oh, no. You heard me. Evade. Okay. Quark's scared of some stock market or something. Take it. Take it. That's all I've got left. What? Is he bankrupt? I powdered nuke supplements. All wiped out. Is there a stock market crash then? I put the bar up as collateral to three different brokers. The loans are doing a week. Oh my god. Here? Yeah. Now? Oh no, I really hope that stupid guy isn't here. Tell him I'm gone. If that's the best- No! Oh my god. Broke! Gala! Okay. Pleasant surprise. I doubt it. Okay, it's not the other guy. How titillating. <laughs> oh, is this guy? This guy's even weirder. Isn't this the cousin that... Then Brunt. I'd like to talk to my dear cousin. Alone. I hate this guy already. Spare me the sad story. I'm well aware of your financial situation and I'm here to help. Help? I understand your skepticism. But I know a way that can help the both of us. There's always something in it for him, which is the issue. Now, I know you've had reservations about entering this lucrative field. Yeah, Quark doesn't like to sell weapons, actually. He actually has a heart. Odo would be onto me in a second. Who said anything about bringing weapons here? Interesting. Public relations. Yeah. Showing our clients a good time. Yeah. I can do that. Of course you can. And you'll earn 5% off every sale. Only five? You'll take five. I had no idea. Weapons is a Oh, it's a lot of money. In a year, you'll have your own moon. Oh my, my own god. Quark's moon. Let's get that a shirt. <sighs> what have I got to lose? No, there's always a catch with these Ferengi deals. That's the issue with them. They follow their stupid rules of acquisition. You know what I mean? You gotta know all of them. I guess Quark does, but still. Star Trek Deep Space No. I'm interested to see. I, I kind of like that Quark doesn't deal in weapons usually. I mean, I know he's just been aware. He's just been made aware of how much money weapons make. And I'm sure even in the real world, illegal weapons circulation makes a lot of money. But I like that he doesn't, and I don't think it's just because Odo would catch weapons quickly. I think it's also because he doesn't really see it as ethical, and I know Ferengis don't really believe in ethical, and Quark has kind of shown that in the past. But Quark is also like the most ethical Ferengi besides Ram and Nog that I know of, you know what I mean? So I think that is one of the reasons as well, which is why I like Quark. Oh my god, of the toys. Quiet. You'll wake him. Only dropped off about an hour. Are we getting a Jake subplot? You look terrible. Didn't get much sleep. Babysitter Jake? On top of that, Anel had some kind of family emergency, so I'm stuck without a babysitter. Don't yeah. Everything's gonna be fine. What did I say? Go to work. You need the rest. I'll be fine. Went through the same thing with Mom. This is directed by Bashir, this episode. I'll check in with you at lunch. If you need me, I'm just a calm line away. Oh no. He. Give him to me. He doesn't like Jake. Give me the bag. I'm taking him with me. To work? <laughs> to work. 
<laughs> Take your son to work day. You stop doing that. Shh. Just being careful. Or it could be anywhere. <laughs> Twerk. We saw him walk down the promenade. That doesn't mean he couldn't be here now. Quark, this is my associate, Haggath. Haggath. And my companion, Talula. She is very tall. I've always said my cousin is an excellent judge of character. My Have you? An accurate description. Mm. Show me. That's the opportunity. Oh, the weapons are set up in the hollow suite. Very nice. These are cool looking guns, I can't lie. Well, that won't be necessary. What? <laughs> what the heck? Sold another hundred thousand to the other side. Now there was a beautiful little war. Too bad about the armistice. So well, these are all hollow programs. That's kind of cool. That makes a lot of sense on how we can hide it better. The riskier the road, the greater the profit. True. Oh, oh this is so fun. We can even show off the specialty items. The specialty items, like? Well done. It was all Quark's idea. Ah, uh, give the credit to Quark, I like it. What's this guy planning though? If this falls apart, then it falls on Quark? Don't cross me, Quark. Ever cross me. Understood? Not planning on it, bro. And his teeth were a little sharper. He'd make a perfect Ferengi. Why'd you tell him? He's pretty short though. I want him to like you. No. I think there's more to it, that's the thing. Here we go. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. The quick recharge is one of its most popular features. I'll take 2,000. 2,000 of them. How'd I do? You're a national salesman. I yes. am, aren't I? He knows how to entertain. I'm gonna like doing this job. He makes a lot of money and he can do what he's good at, entertaining. And he'll be back for more. The Proxinian War is just heating up. Oh my god. War is profit. That's one of the rules of acquisition, is it not? I'm afraid it won't be, uh, soon. Why? And I can't afford to have one of my associates distracted with financial difficulties. So... So he's paid off the loans? Be seeing any profit. Interesting. Quark, do forgive me. I don't like, I mean, this guy's obviously a horrible person, but I really don't like this guy. My associates are like family to me. Shut up. No, they're not. This must be worth an absolute fortune. A small token of my esteem. Cork, go sell them. Make some money. Come on, Yoshi. May not seem fair forcing the good doctor to throw from further away, but... <laughs> they're still doing it. I love it. Genetically engineered. Ah, uh, bring it up again. If I can carry him at work, I can carry him here. Hey, there must be some babysitter on the station that can pacify him. Jake. <laughs> Instant. Happy? Instant crying. Oh, he loves you, O'Brien. He's such a cute baby, too. This hat, this little red hat. Ah, oh, that's right. Keep going. Uh-huh. Oh my god, a low massage. Ah, uh, come in. <laughs> <laughs> Not the person you want to see right now. It's a mere technicality. We both know what you're doing. I promise you, you're going to face the consequences. Not to- Oh my god. Oh! What? Let him go. Maybe it's a, for a bigger plan. Without him or people like him, we'd all be dead. The Cardassians would still be in power. Serious? But I bet they gave flipping weapons to the Cardassians too. Time, mister. I have cut you a lot of slack in the past. I even looked away once or twice when I could have come down hard. <laughs> weapons, but you so much as litter on the promenade, and I will nail you to the wall. <laughs> Something to look forward to. Oh my god. Dude, Cisco can just turn up the intensity to a thousand. It's so awesome. They're letting him go this time, but they're like, don't do it again, you know? Sell to the Cardassians. But why did you sell weapons to the Bajor? I swear, they sold to both. They sold to both. They underestimated the Bajor and the thirst for freedom. I didn't. Okay, genius, I guess. <laughs> Since when? Since they signed an agreement with Metron Consortium. Oh no, you're so dead. You are off enjoying yourself. On Riza. Oh, you're so dead. Oh, Riza. I want to go there. Bad episode when we were there, though. Put my faith in you, and you let me down. Oh, you're so done. <laughs> I made a mistake. An expensive mistake. Goodbye. Oh, you're so dead. 
I thought he was going to get was shot. Unpleasant experience. I guess you can't shoot someone in the station. Can we uh, get back to what we were talking about? Yes, all of my colleagues are family. Yes, what he said is totally true. Morning asleep, look at him, he's so cute. Business always this good? Talk quieter, you're gonna wake Frank Wood. I have to say, cousin, you've done well. And it couldn't come at a better time for both of us. Why? Stepping back, taking it easy for a change. Oh, you're gonna put Cork in, in the lead. His ship blew up shortly after he left the station. Warp core breach! What? That haggith. What a temper. What? He doesn't like to be crossed. Just make sure you don't forget that. But he thinks of everyone as family that he works with. Yeah, yeah. Good morning, Commander. <laughs> She's not supposed to talk to him. I'm a little disappointed in you. I thought you of all people would understand. Understand what? Cool, let's see a Klingon in the background. That you don't care how many people die as long as you make a profit. Who said anything? Yeah, the weapon selling. Over my head, and just as my lungs were about to burst, my cousin threw me a lifeline. Yeah, but you should not have taken it. I don't have anything to feel guilty about. Then why come to me asking for forgiveness? Oh, damn. Oh, Dax, you walk away. What the heck is Quark drinking? That looks disgusting. There's nothing medically wrong with him. What are you telling me? My baby's just sad? Yeah. I'm prematurely aware of life's existential isolation. <laughs> for sure, I think that's it. Palomarian sea urchin. Lightly sautéed with garlic. That sounds pretty good, actually. May I ask you a question? Go ahead. Are you trying to ruin me on purpose? What? Creations with an important new client, and this is the welcome? What? This is awesome. He's going to like this. Of course. Yes. It's food. I would love it. Well, he should. It's delicious. <laughs> Stop playing games. It's magnificent. All of it. I hate this guy. I actually want this, this, the food on the trays to fall on his face. Nasik was the finest officer I ever had. I took really good job, Quirk. By declaring independence for our own world. Betrayal. Sounds like the Godfather. Committed by someone you trusted implicitly. Oh my Most God. times. Stop talking about your other co-workers. I want to make an example of Nasik and her followers. I intend to, to eradicate our entire city. That is insane. Is what you're looking for? Seven or eight million. Seven or eight million. Can you give us a figure? About 20 million. 20 million. Quark. Quark has a soul. You can't do this. What do you think, Quark? 28 million dead? That is insane. Jocularity, shall we? And get down to the business. Oh my god. This guy's intense. If my handpicked successor can't control his conscience, which is insane. Yeah, he is. It's his bank account, not his mental health you should be concerned. No. To eight million people, that just seems wrong. It is wrong, Quirk. Look out there. I hate the way the cousin's like mouth keeps moving. Suddenly went out, anybody would notice. Jeez. But you would know you did it. You would know you helped that. Bars of gold pressed latinum. Ten to help million. Turn out. What? For 28 million people. Would you really tell me to keep my money? But you're equating a person's life to less than a gold bar of latinum. A person's life should be infinite latinum. Each. You don't look so good. That's because I'm dead. Oh my god. Way to go, Quark. We're all dead. I had my whole life ahead of me. I didn't do anything! <gasps> you sold the weapons. Enough to buy a new conscience? Why, Quark? Why did you kill my baby? Oh my god. No! God, he's fighting his own conscience right now. He's gonna say oh, no. Yes, Quark. Oh my god, this is why I love this guy. As soon as I took him down there with me, he fell asleep. Oh. Could be the pattern of the lights. It's O'Brien's aura is there. The thing is that keeping Gariyoshi in the pit is not an acceptable solution. <laughs> I think it's acceptable. Yes, sir. Don't you people have work to do? Oh no, let them look at the baby for a bit. Baby's name is like Kiryoshi or something? What a cool name. Get out. Before I call security. I'm going. 
and take that thing with you. Wow, she's so angry. Don't you want to know where it is I'm going? Not really. Oh my god. Who's had enough? Who's going to stand up and say goodbye, Cork? Wow. She is so angry. It makes sense why she's so angry. He did a, he's done a horrible thing and he's probably already hurt a million people just because of the weapons that he's been selling. But he's finally come to understand. Fish. Love that reflection shot, Bashir. What's one life compared to the lives of 28 million people? Hear him say that? That's awesome. I'm so glad he's come to understand this. He'll be stuck with 28 million people and nowhere to kill them. I'm glad you're amused, Quark. <laughs> well, uh, 17 million, um, it's better than nothing. Then, I guess, what you have to do is tell him there's been a change of plan. I think it's going to blow up the ship, the Regent's ship, maybe. Quark. Believe me, I want this deal to go through more than anybody. Yeah, he really does. These are the first profits I get to keep. Get going. He's out of debt now, that's good. Kayla, meet General Nasuk. Head of the Polymerian Freedom Brigade. Oh my days. Oh my days. You excuse us for just a moment. These are the people that the guy wants to destroy. Realize what we're doing. It's a busy station. We'll keep them far apart. Just think of all that. What is Cork's plan here? I, he's not going to sell anyone anything, right? But how is he going to do that? Oh, but you heard him. This Regent guy reminds me of that guy from Dune. Like that guy who sleeps in oil and stuff. Sequencer isn't working. Then fix it. Shut up, Haggith. Actually, shut up. I just had to get her to scrambler. Oh my After god. After you. Oh my god, he's in there. This is awesome. They're just fighting each other. Hopefully Haggith ate it there. Dude, Quark set a trap, they're all going to be arrested, Haggith in jail, he's free to go until Haggith gets out of jail. Be careful of your son. Looking after a baby can be a full-time job. Mm, it is, I think. I'm not a parent, but I think it is. Do me a favor, just hold him for a minute. I, uh, I have to get his bottle. Oh, he's not crying. He likes Worf. He likes Worf. Worf is the dad. I mean, Worf actually is a dad, but we don't talk about his son, because Worf doesn't talk about his son. Yeah. Worf is now a surrogate dad. I never saw my son when he was this age. You never see your son anyways, any age. You are a fortunate man, Chief. Aww. Chief. That's adorable. Ring the public safety, disregard- How was I supposed to know everyone was going to start shooting? Ah, uh, you do. It fell through all right. Haggath and Gala barely managed to get off the station alive. Oh my god, they're off the station alive. What about the Regent's death? The Regent's dead? Oh no. This is what it's going to cost to repair the cargo bay. Oh my god, can you pay it? Well, maybe we could come up with some sort of installment plan. Okay, he's in debt again. Works for me. <laughs> Why is this gonna say it like that? That's awesome. What? Nice move. But then you always had a knack for getting out of tight spots. Ah, uh, they're friends again. I like it. About my Tonka wheel. It's not your Tonka. It's a gift. It was a gift. Great. <laughs> that was an interesting episode, actually. I really quite like that episode for Quark. It's showing Quark does. I mean, we've seen Quark a lot of times that he has a soul. But I think this was one of the best cases of it. You know what I mean? I enjoyed that episode a lot. And that was my reaction to Business As Usual, episode 18 of season 5 of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And this was a Quark episode and a really good Quark episode as well. We got a little bit of a subplot with O'Brien and the baby, which was super cute. Maybe I'll talk about that a little later. But first, we should talk about Quark. And this was the episode where Quark is running into debt. He has a lot of debt, accumulating debt, and his business is about to go under. His life is about to go under pretty much. He has no money left. And his cousin, I thought we were going to get flipping, you know, that guy who's played by Jeffrey Coombs. I forget his name. It's like Brunt or something like that. I thought we were going to get Brunt. And I was so not excited to see Brunt. I hate, like, Wynn, for example, I love seeing Wynn. I love the way that she's so menacing evil. I love seeing Wynn. Brunt 
is like the opposite of it. I hate how annoying that little shoe stain is. You know what I mean? But we didn't get Brunt. We got his cousin. And I was not a huge fan of his cousin as well as I'm sure we weren't supposed to be. He wasn't really that nice of a person. I just wasn't a fan of how his cousin talked. You know what I mean? He had, It looked like he had like to tobacco in his mouth like chewing tobacco in his mouth the whole time he would keep like licking his lips and sticking his tongue out i don't know very weird stuff with his mouth i i don't know if you guys paid attention to that but that was a little strange but basically his cousin comes to him and is like look work for me work in the weapons department the buying and selling of illegal weapons to people fighting in wars either side fighting in wars and make a profit you know what i mean and you know what cork paid off his debts Except now he has another debt with DS9 and Cisco because of the cargo bay incident. But I'm sure he'll pay that off eventually. So Quark has basically paid off his debts with the Ferengi, but he still doesn't have any money. But he's selling these holographic, well, he's selling the concept of these holographic weapons and people can try them out and stuff. So it's legal, you know what I mean? It's, as the cousin said, it's not going under any you know local laws and stuff like that it's technically legal because they're not real weapons but they they're exactly the same they're just holographic and then all these people are shooting them and firing them and testing them out and then purchasing the actual ones and then they will be you know created and shipped out of federation space so starfleet doesn't get involved and i mean it's a very sensible business strategy i can't lie it's a very sensible business strategy but it's super shady weapons and stuff like that you're you're creating things that are going to hurt people and court going into a business at the start is obviously a pure monetary standpoint you don't see people getting hurt you don't see the lives that it's affecting and so i can understand why cork is incented incented incentivized to go into this business to begin with i really appreciate that he has never just wanted to go into this business to begin with and i think that is partly to do because he's super scared of odo but also because he does have a conscience he is way more conscientious than like 500 percent of Ferengis. you know what i mean not just 100 percent of Ferengis, 500 percent of Ferengis. that's like Ferengis past as well all Ferengis. like it's just him he's like he's different because he's lived on this station he's interacted with these humans and you know other aliens more and stuff like that and i just feel like he's he's kind of grown a heart he strives for much more than money a lot of the time even though money is at the forefront of his mind which is why he went into the the weapons business at the start of this episode but i loved how he was interacting through this guy haggith and his cousin and so i hated haggith like i actually hated haggith if we ever see him again i hope i hope we don't that's all i can say i hope we don't if we ever see him again i don't know what i'm gonna do but i will i will do something because i hate that man i loved the performance by the actor i thought he was great i thought the way that he was he was very menacing at times he was really annoying the way he would raise his voice the way that you never quite knew what he was thinking i thought that was pretty scary and i did find haggard to be kind of scary but i just hated him you know what i mean he was just a horrible person and then you know you see court kind of not necessarily doubting it but you can see like his reasoning as to why he goes into this business in order for money and for profit and stuff but i love the realization of what he is doing is wrong you know the realization that these weapons are going to be sent out to kill 28 million people for just some guy's revenge story you know what i mean just because some guy doesn't like his daughter or something he's now going to kill the whole planet like 28 million people or the whole t city that she's in or something and he realizes and then i love when cisco is dead is dead and you know all the crew is dead and they're swarming around him it's like quirks inner mind talking to him and stuff i found that to be a really compelling way of showing that to quirk and then I loved Quark's strategy as well of taking everyone into the cargo bay. There's obviously the firing and stuff, but Haggath escaped with his girlfriend, so I'm really hoping that we don't see that again. But I really enjoyed this episode, just seeing Quark's mindset, seeing that Quark is different than the general Ferengi, seeing that he does have a conscience and a soul. And I like that the crew ignored him when he was doing this really horrible thing because I think that really helped him get back into the groove of being Quark again. Now, he wasn't Quark at the start of this episode. He wasn't thinking like Quark usually does because he was just thinking about profit but Quark doesn't just think about profit that's why I like him he also thinks about people as well and that's what he's good at people that's what he's good at he's good at talking to people knowing people and even 
you know, understanding people's emotions to a certain extent. I, that's why his business is so good, because he is good at doing that. Anyways, the subplot was really fun with O'Brien and the baby. He was just trying to get the baby to stay asleep and to not cry. Everyone would carry the baby and the baby would cry. And then all of a sudden, the baby wasn't crying at the end of the episode with Worf. And I was really cute when Worf was talking about his son, even though he never talks about his son. He, I had never seen my son when the, I had never saw my son when he was this age. It's like, Worf, you never see your son at any age. Like, you forgot got your you forget your son exists half the time don't like i forget your son exists until it's brought up you know you know what i mean so i thought that was pretty funny but it was cute when what's like you're a lucky man o'brien or whatever and then o'brien was fast asleep on the couch it was just a nice little moment to kind of end the episode and yeah overall i enjoyed this episode i enjoyed the last episode as well some good ds9 this week and i'm excited for next week so anyways i will end the reaction there thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful beautiful amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel it really does mean a lot next week on youtube you can check out hopefully you can make it to the premiere you can check out episodes 19 and 20 ties of blood and water and ferengi love songs ties of blood and water is a really cool episode title so i'm kind of expecting a cool episode there and ferengi love songs i'm assuming is another ferengi episode that'd be interesting just like two episodes after a ferengi episode we get another ferengi episode if you want to watch those episodes right now though you can head over to patreon where i have episode 19 and 20 on patreon right now as well as episodes 21 22 soldiers of the empire children of time and 23 and 24 blaze of glory and empok nor all on patreon right now again if you want to do that then next week you can watch episodes 19 and 20 with me for the premiere or just you know after it comes out anyways thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time for some more star trek deep space 9